identities. But in regards to our conversation this morning, we're going to be talking about origin and the significance of colors in political parties and their growth. I am joined by two political analyst, analysts this morning, one and only Mr. Siraj Chikampa. Chifampa. Chifampa. Please yes. forgive me, yes, Chifampa. Yes. And on the one and only another political analyst that you might have seen and heard is Mr. Wambucha Ndevesa. You're most welcome. Good morning and good morning, listeners. Now this morning, as it stands, the origin of political parties has changed and has switched. Their identification is no longer as we used to know it as. Within Uganda, registered under the Electoral Commission, we have 25 political parties. Yes. All we know of is perhaps five of them, or even three for some people. And it has moved from just the signs that they used to be, one being this for the NRM. We had this as well, if anyone remembers it. We also had the Open Palm and... Yes, as it stands right now, if you walk past someone wearing the color red, it no longer signifies Valentine's, but it could signify people power, our power, some people say. That's the conversation we're going to have this morning. You're most welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just start with the fact that where do political parties start in regards to colors? Uh, maybe before we do that to see where they started is mm. that uh, colors or politics of colors or the power of colors uh, is one way of communicating. Okay. And you have just stated the, uh, a while ago mm. uh, that uh, there are very many political parties. I'm told in Uganda there are about 28 registered political parties. Mm. And they are far for purposes of identity and identification you have to use a simpler way of identifying what, which group from the other group. So uh, color politics is about identity formation and identity identification. Mm -hmm. But also, in ta at times it has got meanings. It carries a certain meaning. Uh, for example, traditionally, historically, red signifies socialist revolutions. Uh, and green, some people now associate it with the Green Party, that is environmental issues. Mm -hmm. So it differentiates them along those lines. And the white in Europe, it used to signify uh, royalty, uh, the, 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 the monarchists, and so on and so forth. So in Uganda here, I think the politics is so complex. And to reduce that complexity into certain meanings, parties have to use certain symbols symbolism mm. it may not only be colors it could be colors it could be slogans it could be certain uh, cut phrases to differentiate one group from the other considering that uh, our society is also still peasantry and uh, the levels of literacy are still low so you do not expect ugandans most ugandans to identify with a party based on programs or ideology. So in the absence of ideology or party program, then what simplifies and creates meaning towards a political pattern identification would have to be a color. However, mm -hmm. the colors do change the meanings with time. Okay. So red used to signify UPC. Mm -hmm. no, and to. no, before it moves on to mm -hmm. people power, mm -hmm. I think this very season, this uh, red signified those who are opposed to amending oh, the yes. constitution. Yes. Uh, uh, to provide for uh, no term limits mm -hmm. or uh, presidential age. Mm -hmm. So it was actually Toji Kwata Kokara. Mm -hmm. Now Toji Kwata Kokara has been appropriated by Chagulanya and people power. You never know tomorrow what it would signify. But by and large, I don't think that uh, the color today, like this people power color, has much to do with ideology or programs because red signified, signified in history the socialist revolutionary progressive movements like Che Guevara's and, and the like. I see even the, 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 the is it Barrett put uh, yes. the, the, the star? The Barrett, yes put on the, the, the cap. Uh, I don't think that even the population here in Uganda understands and knows the history of that revolutionary socialist progressive movements that used to use that color and those, uh, those barrets mm -hmm. to signify socialist revolutionary progressive movements. But nevertheless, they can make a statement. Okay, so Mr. Siraj Chifampa, if we are to have this conversation from what uh, D Mr. Nambesha is saying, mm. could we say that perhaps the presence of colors now signifies our lack of ideology within our political systems? 
Uh, first of all, I just want to take you back a little bit mm. on the issue of colors. True, like the professor said that uh, it was a kind of ident identity for the various political belongings or groupings. Now, when you look at the trend of politics today, yes. world over, not only in Africa, there are uh, revolutionary colors that are sweeping across Africa. In Zimbabwe, you've seen uh, the Chamisa, Nelson Chamisa, they've put on red. Yes. And uh, you've seen the kind of support they've garn garnered in Zimbabwe, more especially the youth. And we had something in uh, Thailand of the yellow color, people were putting on yellow, and uh, that was their revolutionary color. Uh, today in uh, France, you hear of the yellow jackets. So people are getting colors just as a rallying point which could call people together, but not as an ideological uh, thing, mm. that they have ideologies that combine them together. Now, for the issue of Uganda, today, Ugandans are yearning for change. They need to see a different government other than the NRM, other than this, the sitting government that has been here for the last 30 or so years. Now, they always tend to follow anything that is capturing the attention of Ugandans. For example, in 2016, the blue color was the color of the day. Yes. That uh, FDC by then, whoever would identify with blue, mm. he was pro-change. Now today, when it came to the amendment of Article 102B, yes. and uh, I do not know where the red ribbon came from, mm -hmm. previously it was the red ribbon, not even the t-shirts and whatever. Yes, so the, so the MPs ribbon. just plucked on a red ribbon in Parliament. Mm -hmm. I remember I was in the gallery the day the fracas uh, ensued in Parliament. And uh, each MP that came in was putting on a red ribbon, most of the opposition. And uh, the, the Speaker said that uh, that was not their code of dress yes. in Parliament, that they had to remove it. Now, it uh, metamorphosed into the red color. Now, when Bobby Wine comes on to the political scene and uh, he identifies himself as an independent, but rather gets the red color, and the fact that today he's one of the people, the politicians that have got a huge following, most especially for the youth. Yes. You, you see now the trend is changing from the traditional colors of DP green, of blue for the FDC, of the yellow and whatever. So many people are trying to follow Bobby Wayne with putting on the red mm. and uh, the cape and uh, the t-shirts and whatever today. And I'm, I'm projecting that come 2016, you're going to see more people going to on to campaign rallies, putting on overalls like he does. Mm -hmm. You no longer see many people coming to a rally, putting on suits and whatever. Yes. So that is the trend today, that uh, the political waves have begun changing. Mm. Yes. Well, as the political waves continue to change here and there, this is what the people on the ground have to say about it all. As we get onto that bit with our technical issue right now, as we continue with the conversation, I think the biggest thing right now is, do we think that these colors can take it any further? Because yes, they have garnered the numbers, as we can see from the political rallies, right? And even just from the gatherings. But can they bring any change further than just the colors? I think uh, colors is just uh, one item out of very many that can bring about change. Mm. As we have just pointed out, actually, after the breakup of the Soviet Union, we had very many revolutions in the, the so, uh, former Soviet Union actually identifying themselves with colors. There was the Orange Revolution, mm. the Velvet Revolution, the singing revolution in, uh, I think, uh, Estonia. Uh, so identifying those ones. However, you see, the objective conditions must first be right. So if the objective conditions are right, mm. the color politics is subjective. It is just mobilizing people and falling on fertile ground. So uh, unless the objective conditions are right, uh, then you may not have that uh, th that change. What but should be these objective conditions? The objective conditions would be maybe if people are, are angry enough, mm -hmm. uh, they feel frustrated, there is a sufficient despair with the contemporary current situation, mm -hmm. and also that the people are uh, uh, have already uh, uh, created some formations uh, infrastructure yes. for organizing because colors alone may not be enough mm. 
and maybe they are the right leaders to, 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 to do the leading. So if the objective conditions are ripe, uh, I have heard people even say that uh, maybe people power doesn't have a program or others don't have a program. Some of these movements are not necessarily inspired and motivated by programs. Mm -hmm. Even, uh, you know, these songs, even symbolism. Yes. Uh, now, those of you who know some uh, Christian theology, there is what is called eschatology. <laughs> eschatology, the end of things. Mm -hmm. Now you can see, uh, is it Ngure? Yes. Is a kind of an eschatological, mm -hmm. an eschatological promise. Mm -hmm. So people can be whipped up and their sentiments and mobilization can be whipped up by such a slogans or by such an colors or certain symbolisms. And you can see politicians are becoming creative, coming up with certain symbols to whip up, to create more of these subjective conditions mm. that will work that would work on the objective conditions so yes. it depends upon whether the objective conditions of say, say people feeling uh, that they are discriminated that maybe there is no social justice that maybe there is no political justice maybe minorities are left behind maybe certain groups or social groups or class groups uh, have grievances those are the objective conditions then the color politics are the subjective conditions that will be put mm -hmm. in the objective conditions to eventually, to, 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 to eventually realize their the cause mm. but otherwise i don't even see the colors in uganda representing a cause per se it's just individuals that it's they just it uh, using color for identification and identity formation mm. but it is not yet steeped within a certain cause like i told you earlier alone that red symbol symbolized a cause for socialism now red today or yellow today symbolizes what i don't know i see yellow going around red going around green going around mm. other than color for identification what cause does yellow stand for or does green or red stand for mm. uh, other than using it as a mobilization instrument this is instrumentalizing colors Okay, as we get into that, as we get to you, Mr. Siraj Chifampa, yes, yes. what your what your idea could be in regards to the colors and change? We're just going to go and sample the views of the people on the ground that the one and only dead Vidukasi helped us get. <laughs> Never to try in a visa, we can be able to fuse. We have to be a union of saying this office is our own. Never to worry about Yaranji, to worry about Yachi, the Tugasa, the Juna Makuruga. Ah, Kusonga Yabi of Fuzzi, obviously, the political government. Government is here to some message to be a view of Fuzzi. You have to take a monkey to be money. The turn the cock to Americana. Zinolanji, Zasangi Bao. Era te ziri vao, vova zete kakonga vonero vabu, bana bebi ovu fuzi, neva zisangao, katinzo kugeza, zinyamba de kara ya buru, na te ziri wa buru, ah ah, ndi wa yer, na ya te ziri kara saga la kumanya, umpu na buruundi, ate kara waji pule chenyaro yebe kozeti. Nanya <laughs> Gentlemen here say this one says he's of NRM, but he has a lot of red. This man says he's not interested in colors at all. For him, he wants to make money, he wants to look smart, so whatever color pleases him is what he will wear. And he says government should take some more time and educate the people about politics and not...
Omuntu yomwalo woleza government yajigamye nti nno nti kati batani ko kusomesa olu China yomu yajigamba nti omuntu ayambala people ayambala kala ya red abawa people power ayambala yera abawa NRA ayambala gundi baka ni baba soko labe musaje people power genzo okujja nga kala ya red weeri kakada dota ndi ko chuga mu muntu abadai na esati ya red chata abaya ba the people power he says whoever thinks that these colors should belong to a particular political party doesn't even need to be amongst us he needs to go to the hospital Mirungi bansonga omuntu ayambala kala wanga ona gamba yamba de sati ya red au abakulaga cha singo kwa gale kusinga uli edu gale ubiringa tamala agira bwati agira nga bwati na chusa na agira bwati segeza anti yalaga nga side ndofu jagwa ne wayambala red ya segeza fena fena twenyigido wamo kwa mbala red kwa fena fena twa chituli musa ate red tegeza omuntu abuli omwa bela mune musa ayi segera ari na cho kubirono yeronze simagala nganze omuntu wa yeronze chama twa chino chibira cha yeronga chigena ya chimana ne chikwachi ne chino chengera ne chikala ne chigwao we chisaika cha guli ni we chikola yero ina manya chigena kola chi chigenda kala ne chibanga we di we chisegeze vera omuntu musa chivanze njagala mwana ah omuli de he says he loves red personally because he thinks yellow is a sign that things are ready and they are about to get rotten anytime soon uh, but red it is, is his color and it represents him I also can, can ask you a question. Who originally created the colors? Mm -hmm. Who created the, the colors? Is NRM <coughs> who created the colors? FDC created the blue. Before FDC was formed, was there anything called blue on planet Earth? Before NRM came to power, was there anything called yellow or not? Therefore, who created those colors? In a natural world, we find green. That does it mean that green was created by DP as a party? Wetuba tuambala green, wetuba tuambala yellow, wetuba tuambala red, wetuba tuambala blue over black. Echiri mumutima, chechikuru obakala chechikuru. Reality on the ground. The gentleman says this whole affiliation with colors and politics is useless. Colors have been here for a very long time. These politics and it's a FDC has just been here yesterday, so is NRM, so is People Power. Why should we affiliate colors to any of these political parties? Morning at NTV, we are live talking to our people, Omuntu Wawansi, and trying to find out from them their opinions on a couple of the issues here on Namirambe Road on a very beautiful day. Good morning. To a Dembe reality from Uganda, Omuntu Wadembo, Huagira Chakurachi, Chaya Gala. Kadi wa people power yenga bwalaba aino kuwagira people power yi okuleka abakolera mu fujjo no wa yero na ye wa dembo kuwagala yero ye kuwulide kubanga buli muntu aino wa fonera chi emirembe je je mirembe jaletebwa no wa dp na ye bwat ne ke sina bakumanya kujja ko kuwulira Gundi ba mukute, ba mukuba, ba woku ambala miu fone da chole chiri yokole kwa abantu abantu ba kule fudu. Kuga manichono na kalaye, eri eri awa abantu abala la wole. Abantu ba kula fudu ni yesimani, ba luachi chigena bwe chiona yesimani. Wole na kale iyo jo ya kale iyo. Zeni na kale yangu, na ito jambala, si jambala, na yenga mani nti mpagira gudi. Eh, gukala rachi to jambala ni tubera wa mu. Aya ngeri genkuze. Na sigala kuwa bwe bantu magezi. Abantu bana abaude kala ne baziteka ku eh, ku bibina ne baziteka ku ndoza za abantu ba wa magezi chi. Ndi chenali badde ngambo muntu singa obo badde ngo ina kala yo uh, ine chibina cho wagira ngo ina ne kala yo jo kozesa ati wali badde to sana kwenyigira mu fujjo oboli kabere wa movement eni alero uh, 
eteka tiri kulagira kubera wa NRM ate no kola fujo kubanga amateka gakwatira yo uli eri president mu 7 ajja kubera eri gwe no kola fujo kubanga oli wa NRM yeda ajja kujja mu komera oba mu court mu maso ba mulamuzi agenda yo muwagizi wa a a ye president tamenya mateka uli kubenga muwagira nyo ne akugamba mpagira ne yenga tomenye echi tumenye mateka oli makuba matufu ya acho bora ba bana bako le fujo buli muntu bamuvunana kulwe te bamuvunana kulwa mu 7 kwa mu 7 mukodi tabera yo oli no wa people power no wa fdc no wa dp no wa upc era siroza ndi abakulira ebibine ebyo babera yo mukoti nga wako ze fujo bavunana gwe muntu mbo batula butuzi wali kulaba munnabwe kubagoze iki wasine basiba guwomu ngo koze fujjo no lwecho kati fwe wetuli nzinde kibira kyempagira okuvalo kyaberawo okuvale natandi ko kutegera ebyo bofuzi pakana kati nze simanyina nze ndi wano ne simanyina mabega wa kaduku rubu wafanana ne ku cps awo labawo mpulira obulizi mumbera zawo ne yembita wo buyisinga ngenda simenye bo wafana na ngati ni ne kibina kyepagira reality on the ground we are talking colors and their affiliation to politics he says he has been supporting for a very long time he has his own party he has been supporting it for a very long time but cps is not a very familiar place for him he just goes by as he comes to work and he says you can support whatever party you want but that doesn't give you the right to go and cause a lot of chaos and fight support whatever it is that you want wear whatever color that you want but don't cause chaos reality on the ground we are down here talking to Omuntu Wawansi. Interesting views there. Now, the most interesting thing about colors and parties is will they cause significant change at some point? We did have Mr. Nambese, Nambesha say something, but Mr. Chifa, yeah. Suraj, what would you have to say about this? Yeah, I know that uh, colors per se are something that is showing that some, some people are making a statement. Mm. For example, that uh, people who uh, identify themselves with red are people who try to communicate that they are pro change they want to see change colors per se can be used as a rallying point that can bring people together yes. for them to effect their change that they need to see so i think in future political parties are going to be in a very difficult position in terms of retaining the traditional colors that they were used to like uh, the green, the red, and the whatever. But whoever will come up with a, uh, come up with a kind of uh, color that signifies change, mm. people will always jump onto that bandwagon and identify themselves with that kind of color. Okay, so it is agreed that we all need change. Mm -hmm. And from one of the views that was put out is that one of the gentlemen did mention the fact that perhaps we need to educate the people more about these For things. Sure. Should we have education in regards to, yes, there's political education in school, but should more be done in educating the youth, in educating those in school right now, even at university, about political parties, about political parties and their colors? The, uh, talking about uh, education, mm. and let's borrow the language of education. And in education, when you have a curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, you talk about the content, and how to deliver the content. Delivering the content technically is called pedagogy. Okay. And uh, a good teacher is supposed to vary his methods, his pedagogical med methods, how to impart the knowledge. So when you are talking about creating consciousness and awareness, how do you do it? Do mm. you only go and lecture and talk to people? Talking to people is good, but it's not sufficient. You have to vary the methods which they call visual aids uh, sometimes in education so using colors mm. is one way of messaging i think i had somebody there said it has no message it's not communicating mm, it's not communicating he's wrong anything. he's wrong he's mm. not right colors or other symbols it could be slogans it could be uh, prophecy mm. very soon you might hear prophecy by the way mm. people might start using prophecy, prophecy as symbol for political mobilization mm. or any other method or rumors even people sometimes use rumors so 
uh, when you are imparting knowledge for change or for impact, if you want a certain outcome, mm. you do not only talk because talking is not enough. Yes. You have to use other methods of indicating. And now the politicians are talking, they are on the podium and talk, they send the messages through writing or through television and whatever, but they also use certain learning enhancing methods and using symbolism, symbols as color. It can be one of those which will create uh, impact in terms of political identification and political actions. And this is, is historical. Mm. Even here in Africa, people used to have drums yes. as a symbol of power or other insignia like spears and arrows and whatever the case may be to communicate a political message. Mm. So you do not only use lecture methods, talking methods, communicating. There are different methods of communication. So colors is another method of communicating. But I wanted to comment on one thing that I had from a member from the public there. Mm who said, ah, uh, uh, you know, the politics, it is useless. No, 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 no. Politics is about allocation of resources. Who gets what, yes. when, and where. So for him to think that politics is useless, he is not, he is not educated, really. Mm -hmm. Politics is very important, and a citizen, a good citizen, as opposed to actually to a good person. There is a difference between a good citizen and, and a good, good person. person. A good person is that one who follows the law, who pays taxes, who does not quarrel, who does not do all those things. That is a good person. However, a good citizen or an active citizen is that one who feels that his community or his nation or even international community needs him and therefore he participates, mm. he is not participated, he participates or she participates in shaping the future, the good future of his community. So we need good citizens who are active in politics, also in community affairs mm. or generally in public affairs. So for him to say, you know, if you are politics, he's the one who is going to cry when there is a certain high tax that he cannot pay. Mm. He's the one who is going to say there is no, there are no drugs in hospitals. The children do, are not going to school or not getting quality education. That is wrong to me. And uh, it's, but I appreciate their levels of understanding politics. Otherwise. Colors are part and parcel of politics. Symbolism is part and part of, of politics historically and now. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Mambutia. What do you have to say, Mr. Sirad, uh, in first, regards to education? First of all, it is high time for political parties, the traditional ones that we know, to go down to the ground, to the grassroots mm. roots, communicate their message to the public. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the government should open up space, political space, for political parties to have the opportunity to reach out to the masses. Yes. Otherwise, today, when we talk about the training and educating of the masses, when NRM goes to Changkwanzi, the National Political Training Institute, whatever, they do not recognize it as a national political institute mm. where DP can have an opportunity, FDC or any other party. But rather, when a sitting government uh, takes over, they will consider it as their very own, disregarding other political parties. So, one, government should open up space mm -hmm. for other political parties to have access to the masses. Otherwise, government might see that it is closing the political space for other political parties to go down to the masses like buying their political rallies and many other things like the music shows for Bobby Wine and many other things. Yeah. Something amorphous like the people power which has nothing to do with political parties will come and sweep up the entire country which will even undermine the political parties themselves. Mm. NRM inclusive as well. Secondly, Today, when you talk about training the masses, I, I, I was not here, but my colleagues are saying that UPC, during their time, even in schools, children will be taught about UPC. Mm. The NRM government in the past, that, uh, the, the, in the recent past, President Museveni was agitating for involving the mustard seed in the curriculum yes. so that students should be taught about uh, patriotism using mm. the mustard seed. So I think 
this is the time for political parties today, regardless of whether you're the ruling uh, political party or whatever, to go down to the masses and begin communicating ideas, ideologies for political parties, for people to begin identifying themselves with particular political parties, knowing what they stand for. Okay. Yeah. As we wrap this up, I'd like to ask both of you one simple question. Where does this leave our political sphere within the country? We're now putting more of just colors, nothing else in regards to ideology, none whatsoever. But where does it leave our political sphere as Uganda in 2019? Because that means we are closer and closer to 2021. No, we are talking about civic education, and uh, my colleague here and you have been talking about civic education. Mm. Yeah, and I told you uh, uh, a while ago that civic education, which is about communicating to the general public, it, it does not use one method. Mm. It uses different methods of communicating yes he's talking about going to the masses and explaining politics and the, that political parties should be schools of education political education that is and the government carries out civic education by the way you forgot that in schools now they are patriotic clubs uh, under president's office uh, i would have loved that that civic education is under the minister of education because okay. once you put it under president's office then it, it will be looked everything. at as partisan and yeah. therefore it will have a problem of communicating mm. yeah they, 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 they can communicate using of course lecture methods and explaining concepts like democracy although even the concept of democracy is symbolic you see even the words we speak are also symbolic mm. so it depends who or which method you want to use in communicating and which symbols you want to to communicate around he's talking about uh, the government should open the political space it should actually the, the constitution open the political space so uh, government should allow should, should should create conditions or should not interfere in the political space but mm -hmm. even the other groups or political parties or civil society should also struggle to either open the political space or keep the political space open or expand the political space and one way of opening the political space and expanding it could be mobilizing people using colors so color politics which some of you would want to dismiss mm. is not dismissible it can it is an instrument it is instrumentalized for opening the political space it is not only color i was just mentioned a while ago mm -hmm. that they are now using appropriating religion yes. in a eschatological way it will be in a prophecy way it mm. will be in other ways they are appropriating colors i mean uh, uh, people power has appropriated color red which actually originally was upc and later it was toji uh, but it has appropriated it so politicians because they want to pass on a message to message they appropriate certain symbols but you can't i have heard let me correct this one mm -hmm. but i have heard even people say that people should not use colors and people should not even use the religious language and the religious eschatology whatever the case may be why are they saying it now first of all uganda's uh, politics has been steeped in providence mm -hmm. our motto for god and my country yeah. that is already <laughs> a religion yes Two, our anthem, or oh, Uganda may God uphold thee and far, far. Really Actually, good. after we have sung the national anthem in Uganda mm -hmm. at the public meetings, I don't know why we even go for prayers because <laughs> the national anthem itself is a prayer. Is a prayer. <laughs> so why haven't they questioned the national anthem having been a religious prayer and mm -hmm. worship almost? What about for God and my country? Yes. So people appropriate uh, uh, politicians appropriate things from religion but religion also sometimes appropriates Tripoli. for example we have got liberation theology mm -hmm. there was in america at one time there was what was called the social gospel so they feed into each other mm. and there is now what we call political islam and things like that so we have to contend with these political or public issues and there is cross fertilization and appropriation from one side to the other where it leads us well we are in politics and the people can appropriate all different symbols and there is nothing wrong with that in my opinion provided you don't abuse it by using it to harm others but as long as you are not harming others you are free to appropriate uh, language symbolism mm. for purposes of communication
Okay. Mr. Siraj, what do you have to say uh, about that as well? Briefly, mm. that uh, one, uh, we are going to lose political royalty. Mm. That uh, we grew up, someone saying my grandfather was a DP, mm. my father was a DP, our family is a DP. This kind, this kind of waves that are sweeping up the, the, the political spectrum in Uganda yes. are going to reduce the level of, pol of political party royalty. Secondly, uh, where we're heading, if at all political parties do not carry out civic education, like we've said, and are trying to build structures and recruit more members mm. to their political fold, very soon we are going to see that political parties will soon become irrelevant in the politics of the country. As we go ahead, I, I prophesize and pro project that come 2021, red is going to be the color of change. Okay. Now, I do not know and whether... And yellow is going to be a color of what? And uh, <laughs> yellow will be a color of uh, remain. The situation should remain as... The status quo should be maintained. Mm. Like it has more been. More of the same. More of the <laughs> same. <laughs> like it has been. Mm. Now, when we come to 2026, probably, mm -hmm. another color might emerge in the middle. Yes. Probably a certain white or whatever color. And when we go to 2026, you would see the red would have changed, the wave would have changed to a certain color. Mm. So, this kind of uncertainty in terms of uh, political loyalty. It's going to be so much visible in the coming years. Okay, and as we speak about the, the uncertainty of mm. the political parties and how they may not actually be able to survive this, mm. we also had uh, Mr. Mambusa talking about the fact that we have to expand the space here and there. Mm. Let's talk about the iPod Summit, the mm. fact that they want to strengthen political parties within that, that dialogue. Do we believe that actually we can strengthen the political parties and how can we do it? Uh, I have reservations about iPod. In principle, yes, I agree with iPod, and there should be a dialogue so that there is uh, there are certain agreed minimum mm. standards to play politics. But the way uh, uh, iPod stands now today, it is as if it is a, a, a space for. Uh, is it supposed to be for dialogue? Yes. To me, it seems as if that is a space for some of the political parties and political players to be dialogued. Mm -hmm. or participated rather than participating. Okay, because Please explain that. To explain that one is that in the ideal situation of participation, where you are not participated, mm. but participating, you must first of all assume that the space is, is equal or provides equality. That is, all the actors in the space go there as equal, but not with hierarchy. Mm -hmm. But the moment you begin having hierarchy, there are everything. those who are meeting others and standing still to meet others, mm. then you, you, you begin to see that people are being dialogued instead of dialoguing. In other words, it could be a space for, for actually uh, using as an instrument, instrumentalized iPod could be instrumentalized mm. to actually control the, the, the others. Mm. But otherwise, in principle, iPod is okay, provided some people are not participated. Now, when you are participating, you also need to have an agenda, an agreed agenda. Agreed mm -hmm. agenda. Now, in, within the agenda, if it is politics and you want a, a legitimate outcome, you must also agree as to how you are going to implement what you agree. But if you just go in a meeting, to agree without first agreeing talks within talks, mm. agreeing as how you will put into practice what you have agreed upon and the modalities of ensuring that that what you have agreed will be implemented either informed by law yes. or by the constitution, then what you are just participating in mm. is for people manipulating the space in other words there are people who are trying to participate others mm. or dialogue others mm. rather than actually going for a genuine dialogue and there is even this dialogue that we are talking about the national dialogue organized by the elders and whatever Fine, yes. i have failed to see how they want to cut out that dialogue mm -hmm. without first agreeing as to how the outcome of the dialogue will be actualized, implemented, 
once you don't agree on that one, then you are creating a space mm -hmm. for some people being participated. Uh -huh. Because nothing else will be coming out of it. I mean, you result. must have how the outcome will be implemented. implemented. No, so just having a conversation. You don't just go to have a debate like we are having here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then uh, later on, nothing is actually actualized. Yes, but once day. you like steep it in law, mm. and you first pass a, a dialogue act, and you say, once the outcome is like this, then it will have to be implemented like this. And whoever does not implement it will be sanctioned. There will be sanctioned. Mm. There will be sanctions against that who does not implement or agree to. with what was agreed upon in the dialogue. Yes. But just going for a dialogue without first uh, agreeing on the outcome, I suspect some people will be dialogued, or as I put it, participated, not participating. Moving away from participating and being participated and dialogued, Mr. Siraj, what do you have to say? One, iPod was an idea that uh, political parties should always come together and talk yes. things that, combi that unite them as politicians. Now, there is, like Professor said, that he has re reservations. I just want to make these, th these points. One, iPod has got a budget of six billion shillings yes when they went to the president to meet him f before the summit that they had in Munyonyo, they asked government to begin funding mm. ipod now you know the consequences of government well, that was the first item uh-huh <laughs> you <laughs> know the, and uh, the president was saying that uh, your budget is six billion mm. okay yeah i know we can add another six billion and I government know. has nothing w wrong with that oh, okay. yes. now that shows the consequences <laughs> yes. of yes. being yes. participated yes. like uh, uh, he said <laughs> secondly uh like when he says of uh, sitting on a round table when you're all equals yes uh true ipod is trying to to bring political parties together but there is someone politicians that, a politician that i spoke to who told me that ipod is actually calling, killing political parties it is how is, is it doing it that in the past part, political parties here had ideological parties elsewhere internationally dp would always liaise with the dp in america cp would uh, liaise with the cp in in the uk and many other political which would do the funding on, of political parties mm. now all those those programs were killed and destroyed that a dp in america cannot fund a dp in uganda why because they would tell you that iPod is even providing some money to the political parties. Secondly, government is funding the political parties. We have a docket in our budget where we fund political parties. Now, the 10 billion that is allocated to political parties, you find that 8 billion go to the NRM, okay. and uh, some four, 1 billion goes to FDC, and uh, some 500 to DP and UPC. Then the Jemas who have got one member of parliament will get something like 50 million shillings to a political party to be built. 50 million shillings a year is such a very small amount of money to a political party. Mm. So they are saying that iPod actually, they are coming and saying that uh, we are helping these political parties grow in principle, that's what they say. Mm. But in actual terms, yes. they are just killing political parties. Because the West is looking at iPod as uh, something that is there to support political parties, when actually they're not doing the physical support. I can give you an example that iPod is giving out 25 million shillings mm -hmm. for capacity building to all political parties. Really? Now, for God's sake, how much can 25 million shillings do countrywide? Mm. You understand? So, iPod per se, I think, uh, need to be re discussed. Okay the memorandum and get to know but let me come in quickly here mm -hmm. you know ipod <laughs> this is laughable uh, the ipod summit for example the ipod has been ongoing but uh, all of a sudden for all these years it has uh, been uh, put in place as a space is it since 2009 Nine, mm -hmm. yeah uh, they, they had not been, it seems a summit or they had been only one or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, Edarim has been resisting and Museven has not been going for that uh, summit. Now, the elders and the interreligious council come up with a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Now, to preempt the dialogue, you all of a sudden go for the iPod summit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you announce the formation of the constitutional review commission so the constitutional review commission and ipod i see them as instruments for preempting 
the other national dialogue okay. so that whenever the national dialogue brings out certain issues we say I think those ones, let's leave them for iPod. Or that, those ones, let's, let's leave them for the Constitutional Review Commission. Mm. How come that when the National Dialogue proposal comes on table, is when the iPod summit takes place, is when the Constitutional Review Commission is announced? In Runyangore, we have a saying that <laughs> how come that there is a coincidence mm. that when my ship is lost is when the, the hyena starts defecating wool. <laughs> I could suspect that this wool in the feces is a result of, of my ship being, being eaten. eaten. What? what a coincidence that what the National Dialogue is talked about is when the Constitutional Review Commission is set up yeah, and so. when iPod Summit takes place. Mr. It seems to be that there is uh, something that was created in order to preempt the national dialogue. Well, one would call it coincidence, as you have said, and we'll wait to see how this develops. But as of now, colors and political parties continue to be a conversation. And as anyone can see, as you look at your television station a number of times on NTV, you do see that most rallies are held within color understandings. And even just in normal day-to-day -day meetings, colors have seemed to be at the forefront of this. I have been joined by two political analysts this morning. Thank you so much for coming through, Mr. Siraj Chifampa. And Mr. Mambusi and Devesa, thank you so, so much thank for sparing some time to come through. It is still morning at NTV. The hashtag is morning at NTV. You can continue the conversation on Twitter using that hashtag and Facebook as well. You're watching Morning at NTV. From Uganda's political and economic capital, to your district. There are very many youth today who are unemployed. The veterinary doctors who are trained are being replaced by soldiers. From Karamoja to Soro, from Wududa to Gulu, we are on the way to your district. We all can do something if we are united to end sexual and gender-based violence. The police